means means higher position uh, in the company okay <laughs> there is no meaning for that so i'll explain one thing good position means one guy has prayed that but i should have a bank uh, amount with me all the time so i should uh, have a ac room and all those things this is a good position or not but navin sai is it good yes, position sir yes sir yes sir it's a good but position but is so but is he is working as a what i call security guard at uh, atm center <laughs> yes he is there money is there <laughs> no work is there so good position na yes, sir many companies are accepting <laughs> this answer and not answer. this answer in their point of view uh, should explain sir yeah that's what what you have to explain my question is that <laughs> so it depends upon their mindset i think sir no 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 it's not that it's not that that's not that depends upon the mindset of the people this is this question is a valid question why the hr guy or why other people will ask you is how what is your goal or growth rate what do you expect that from this organization or from you are in how you uh, do the efforts the behind the question as in the theory or whatever that you call it as behind this question the lot of thing is there they are expecting your behavior that means i can expect that what is your way of growth or how you learn or how you grow or what is your uh, clarity on your uh, things that is the main thing here how clarity you have on your goals or i don't like on the goals but how clarity you are on the road map that you want to reach this is the way the question they will ask so this gives us when i ask this question this gives us how you are understood how how much you are understood about the position and how much you have where about the path you are going that clarity is required here that is the reason why the people will ask this question so i will say one thing say navin for you suppose you want to become as a network engineer at two years i want to become as a network engineer you have to say like that so not only simply saying that two years network engineer so for that how much efforts you are keeping in that that means first i will join in the organization i will understand the practical things in this for the 6 months then simultaneously i'll prepare for the ccna or cisco certificate exams so it will take another 6 months for me so you have covered one year so another 6 months i will get an expertise on this and i want to become as a system administrator or network administrator this is what we expect from you not as a good position or this position or that position you can say any of the things so i want to become a manager you can say that also but to become a manager what qualities you require that you should understand so to become a manager it's not that uh, Uh, just like a village uh, keeping the uh, cows or this managing so you are dealing with a people with a different mindsets so how you will become as a manager so first you have to understand that i'll combine i'll get interact with the uh, team mice and i'll resolve the 
issues of the teammates who are lagging behind the technology. So that means here you are showing that you are good to go with the team. This answer is indicating us that, OK, you are good to go with the team. So once I give with this, so I am one of the part of the team. And I want to lead the people who are there with my team by suggesting them if there is an issue, I'll be the front face for that. And I'll try to resolve the issue and making him some knowledge to understand the subject. So this makes that OK, you are reaching to the correct point. That means this is the you know that OK manager means this qualities is required. Network engineer means this qualities is required. Uh, system administrator means this quality is required. Suppose I want to become as a cloud engineer. Or cloud support guy. So you have to say that OK, I'll be working on this system. I'll come across with the various uh, issues that are coming on the system side and network side so that I will have an ability to understand what is the overall organization's uh, part of it. It will take three years for me or two years for me to understand the concepts, to understand the technology. Then I will go for the uh, AWS training or Azure training or uh, Google training. Then I will understand the subject so that I want to become as a cloud architecture, being a knowledge that what I have on the technical side, I want to become as a um, cloud architecture. So this is indicating that, OK, you are very specific and you know the path of it. See how beautifully it looks as I compare. I want to be a good position yes, or I want to be this. So the meaning behind this is this. So for everyone, I want to say for all the people who are here on this, this is the way you have to learn. This is the way you have to practice yourself. Even after joining in the organization also, you have certain idea that I want to become like this. I want to become like this. On that, you have to put your efforts. So well, I am I before this, I was there as a global IT head. That means I used to manage the three countries network with 25 uh, senior engineers used to report to me. It means I have reached to that stage means I, I know that what exactly the thing to reach that stage. It took me around 10 years time to reach that global IT head. So what efforts I am learning, how I am learning this, what are the things that required here to go to that position? I don't say that keep goal and go for that. I never believe on any goal. OK, goal, I don't want any goal on that. So you have to go accordingly, according to the uh, whatever the technology is changing and whatever the things are changing, you have to go accordingly. Then you will shine in your lives to come to the technology cloud. It may took me for 10 years, maybe because at that time there was no cloud. Now. For you guys, if you really work hard, if you really work, uh, put your efforts on the server side and uh, network side and then come to the Linux side. So within four or five years, you will be becoming as a, a cloud engineer. So this is the way how you have to uh, learn the subject. Uh, not like that you are engineering college, you have done something, one PDF file you have given, you have passed out of that. So I don't believe that uh, the engineering is that. I am an electronics and communication engineer from the Bangalore University. Say there is a things that you should say that. So now I can say proudly that was whatever the vehicles you are running, for that, I was the member for the total Telangana and uh, AP. 
high security registration place designed and implemented around 143 uh, centers. So how you want to become the behind uh, the question is a very, very valid question. Where you want to be there after that? That means it is indicating your thought process. I want to know your thought process. For that reason, I'll ask that question where you want to be after two years or after three years. So I want to analyze that whether you have that approach or not. This makes you to keep you in this. So here also, when I talk about the service desk, when I talk about this, so your thought process, whatever you are, so I'll keep you in the technical side. So when I keep you in the technical side, I want to make you to this. Suppose you don't have the technically, you are not shown your interest on the technical side when I am asking some questions some questions i think okay you want some job let him give some job you will become a postman here ticket will come you will pass the ticket to some other person you won't i won't give you that uh, uh, what you say the right to resolve the issues so try to understand that the technology why we are giving this, uh, making you to learn this technology. This will make you to go in anywhere within four or five years, the modern technologies you are learning. Okay. <clears throat> Hope now you understood the question, importance of the question where you want to be after three years or two years or one year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So one more question that I always confuse was, why should we hire you? Okay. <laughs> even though it don't even satisfy you, what we say? Why should we hire you? This yes, is sir. indicating, this is the one of the one more question that, that means he want to know what the best qualities that you have in you. So why I should hire you? That means according to the job role, we have to explain that. Suppose this is a service desk role. So in this, why I want to hire you? So I have very much good interaction with the, before this, I have a good interaction with the client sites and this. Client means which client is not like that. I have a good companion and good, uh, uh, what you call uh, problem solving issues with my among with my friends. I think I am one of the best when I am t when I am working within the organ in the college itself. I used to resolve the issues of the people issues of my friends. I have become a team lead there uh, to guide them into this. So these are the qualities that I have with me so that I can interact with the uh, other person who is uh, unknown to me with a respectable manner. I have dealt so many issues which are concerned to, uh, not the technical, because you are the fresh guy. So which are concerned to say either a emotional issues or like this. So I think I will be the best suited for this position where I am interacting more with the client so that I I have the idea or I have the what you call confidence that I can satisfy my customers very best as compared to the other guys because of these qualities I have. So this leads me to make me to hire at some position. This is the way you have to explain that. So why you want only HCL? They must ask that question also. So the question when you come to this, why you want to be HCL or other things? So you can say that HCL is a enterprise organization where I have, where I think I will get a lot of opportunity to learn a lot of this. So 
other things I have not got. HCL, I got this offer. Very first, I got an offer to the HCL to come into the service desk. So I think this is an enterprise level organization. You will provide me a lot of opportunities to make me to uh, enhance my knowledge or make me to learn more technical things in this. So that's why I thought HCL is a best suited place for me where I can put my efforts and I can get the whatever the knowledge I want to get that knowledge I will get. Like this, you have to answer the questions for that. OK. Any more good, really you answered some questions really good. Sir, Any more? one more question. It, uh, if we are not selected, what is your feeling and what will you do next? The, OK, only the thing is that if you are not selected, I don't think that I won't select in this. But as you said, you are not selected. Well, anyway, whatever that I learned that will be useful for me to fight with other things and uh, this knowledge I will use for some other uh, where I have an opportunity. That's it. I don't feel any bad or I don't feel anything because it's a it's a game. That's all. So I want to show my metal. I have shown my metal to this. I'll feel I won't rejected here. But if I reject it, I don't feel bad for this. So one thing I'll correct myself where I went wrong. And I will use this knowledge in other organizations uh, interview so that I'll correct my deeds uh, wherever I went wrong that I will correct it and I will face uh, boldly or I face uh, very this with other organization. Yes, so always you have to say that you are confident enough. So don't think that this is only the organization that is giving. Please give me this. You never you should not say that. OK, boss, if it is not there, OK, was no problem. I I performed well. Might be there is some wrongs, but as per knowledge, I performed well. If there is any issue, anything which I am not able to perform, I'll correct it and I will go for some other uh, interview so that I will get one more chance. This makes that the interviewer, whoever it may be, even if you did a wrong, he thinks that, OK, you know that you did something wrong and you are, you know how to correct it and you want to utilize your knowledge to some other place. So this is the way you have to answer for that type of questions. OK. OK, sir. OK, sir. Okay, and good. one more tricky question that recently asked if if I win one million, can you still working in HCL if you win? Yeah, definitely I'll work until I have. You can say that definitely I'll work uh, with HCL as the HCL is a big organization. Don't say big. HCL is an enterprise organization. I have a lot of opportunity. Why should if everything is going fine, why should I leave the organization? You have to question them. When everything is fine, there is no point for me to leave the organization. So I will be with you guys only. OK, so thank you so much. OK. Anybody who have? Any more things, please come out uh, so that I can guide you guys like this. OK, now you are. This is what yesterday's we have seen. I think uh, I not shared my thing now. I'll share my things. OK, is it visible to all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, this is what we have seen yesterday's session. When you are in the service desk team, Mainly your work is what? To support the 
clients or you will be the spark for the I'll say service desk. Is the service desk guy. Is spark. Spark means single point of contact. Single point of contact. To resolve the issues or single point of contact between the between the client and the IT team to resolve the, the issues raised by the client and the customer satisfaction. You can say client and client satisfaction or customer satisfaction, whatever you click, client satisfaction. So this is the service desk main role. And for this, you are using the tools. What tools you are using? One tool is for, I'll take this. Once I am summarizing this, what you have learned, those who have not come into that, that also I am summarizing here. So service desk, work with, tools this is the difference between the service desk guy and the help desk guy so where the service desk guy will work with a tools and act proactively Proactively means what? Before the system goes down, you will use these tools so that your system should run very 24 by 7 by 365 days. There is no production loss in this. And prevent the down times this is the main role of the service desk guy whereas the help desk when you see help desk means here this guy does not interact interact with the tools. Only service desk tool is there. Here, how many tools you will use? You will choose, you will use one tool called service desk for a ticketing system and for monitoring, you are using network monitoring system. for monitoring the bandwidth of the, that means how much I am using my organization using the bandwidth. Suppose I have 100 GB bandwidth or 30 GB bandwidth. So in that, how much I am using, how much the uh, device is using or how, how much the my organization is using. So monitoring tools, and the next is this bandwidth monitoring, we call it as PRTG monitoring tool. Tool for bandwidth utilization. So how much bandwidth I am utilizing for this? So this is what PRTG graph we call. That is Pessler's router traffic 
card, this cordless. Okay. You will find here in this ERTG. I am only showing this bandwidth monitoring tools. Bandwidth monitoring tool. Network or bandwidth monitoring. It's not done. Just I will show the images because I have to configure this. So here it is showing me that how much bandwidth I have utilized in this. Suppose if you see this uh, clearly one, I will show you this part if you see this. What happened to this year? Why it is not coming? I don't know. I don't know what happened to this. Okay, I'll show you again this. If you see this, so here you can able to see that how much is the bandwidth I am using? That means this is the incoming traffic, outgoing traffic. How much is the incoming traffic? How much is the outgoing traffic? Here it is not correct. So I'll show you my PPT where I have given this. <coughs> so in this service, this. So So this is the graph. So here it is indicating that how much utilization I have. Whether I am using underutilization or overutilization. This is very important for the organization because if I am using, suppose I have a bandwidth of um, say a 10 GB bandwidth I took for this. Bandwidth means now you are using 100 Mbps or like that. So here I am using, say, my organization is using 10 GB bandwidth. In this 10 GB bandwidth, if organization consumes 80% of it, 80% means even if I take 10 GB, it will only, I will use 8 GB. It means always that comes only 80% of that only comes into utilization. So when I reach 8 GB, if I reach 6 GB or 5 GB, then my internet will get slow down. Internet will get slow down. So this is the one point that is indicating us, okay, whether we are using excess or whether you are using uh, less because my internet has gone down means what? Slow down means my performance, my team performance will go down. So production will go down. As a service desk guy, as it is, you have to intimate to the other guys but the internet is going this much of speed or this much of it is consuming this much of gb out of 8 gb so then they will inspect here inspect who is the person using more gb here in the organization level I can see each and every person's activity, what they are doing. If I am using consuming more bandwidth, being a network engineer or a network administrator, I will monitor that guy. That is why this guy is using, say, I myself using 1 GB of uh, bandwidth, 1 GB of internet. Okay. Then being a service desk guy, being a this guy, 
you should inspect or you should say to the guy whoever is a network guy or whoever is there you have to inform that this guy is using more bandwidth then i will inspect in the firewall why this guy is using that bandwidth is it a necessary or unnecessary uh, traffic is coming into that maybe he may not use more bandwidth but consuming more gb of data that means it is indicating there is a problem with that application what he is using so that any hacker utilizing that loophole and he wants to enter into this like this i can understand the monitoring part of it so like this i can see the monitoring of this so how much bandwidth i am using what type of uh, router you is using which bandwidth or which link if i have a five links i will get five links like this so this five links which link is high which link is more utilization suppose i want to give an access for the guys i will say both are there developers are there some other people are there where i worked for some organization that organization work is what they will uh, inspect the project itself is that their company itself is this so inspect the drivers drivers driving in us but the company people working in india so how the us driver is using the driving so it said live picture they will get so what is the use of this what is the use of this project when you talk about this in us the insurance is a very high rate of insurance they have to pay if there is any accident is there so this insurance guys have made one uh, this so they have given to the car organization uh, that they have to inspect that so whether the driver is while driving whether he is using the mobile phone or whether he is using the he is talking to some other guy whether he is suddenly giving a applying the brake to that so all these things will be noted by the users who are working on this from here we will watch that the people will watch these guys so how they are working how they are using this so for this i have say i have 30 gb of this this requires more bandwidth then i will say in this 30 gb 20 gb i will allocate for this project and another 10 gb i will allocate for the other guys who are the developers that is more than sufficient for them so i am segregating as a project wise how much bandwidth they are using or i want to monitor that bandwidth whether that is properly utilizing or not so this is the basic thing in the monitoring system so why the monitoring system is required for us is this is the basic thing for monitoring the so entire is project depends upon this bandwidth only if bandwidth choked then i won't get the live moment of that then i cannot track the accident happens if that accident is happened is because of the driver fault or because of the other guy's fault that i have to give it to this 
So this type of projects will also be there in this. So this is where the network guy or where the security guy, sorry, where the service desk guys will place a, a big role in this. So monitoring the uh, systems or monitoring the servers, monitoring the bandwidth of that. So how much they are using? Suppose you say you are uh, going for the servers where we have um, like this, suppose you say I have a server from Monday to uh, Monday to Friday, the traffic is very less. That means Monday to Friday, the traffic is only 10 lakhs per minute. But Saturday, Sunday, my traffic has gone to 10 lakhs to 30 lakhs per minute. So I have to inspect that. So whether this 30 lakhs is a real traffic or unwanted traffic or which traffic it is. So analyzing this, you will give this graph to the cyber security guy. Then the cyber security guy who analyzes this. So really this increase in the 30 lakhs is really a useful data or not. Or is the traffic which is coming to my server is a useful or anybody is trying to breach the security of my servers to get the data from that. That's what yesterday I have shown you. Fire I is that. So there I can see how much traffic is coming, how many people are going to attack, which uh, area the people are going to attack, whether it is a finance or whether it is a other things on this. So this is the way where the service desk plays a vital role with the in the organization level. So I won't go and sit in front of this monitoring tool because I have some other works. I have an experience. I have some other works. I will monitor this. I will uh, maintain this infrastructure. So that is given to you guys. So go and monitor the so, um, network monitoring tool. So your analysis on that monitoring will lead the organization to grow. Because I don't see that uh, monitoring tool. You are the person responsible to see that monitoring tools if you are working for the data centers. Uh, all the people may not go to the data centers. So how you will go to the data centers? That is how you perform in your technical interview. So the technical answers, how you give the technical answers is the best way to judge me whether you can come to the technical side or whether you go to this side. So where I said help desk system. So in a help desk, they won't use any tool. They won't interact with that. So what happens in this help desk? They will only take the ticket take the ticket and they won't this ticket will come once the issue damaged two minutes somebody is calling hello okay that is they won't interact with that, okay, bus server is down. Then they will say that bus to that server, guys, server is down. So already damaged has happened. I think help desk guy, I can say in briefly, he is doing the post-mortem. Post-mortem means what? What do you mean by post-mortem? Anyone understand what is mean by postmortem? Now, 
no he should find the reason of death death that means already dead the he has already dead so issue has yes, gone yes. and spoiled the uh, organization then you are searching why this has happened but where the service desk guy will see before the issue is coming with using a monitoring tools with using the other tools you are proactively acting on that monitoring part or proactively you are taking the uh, decisions so that my system should run 24 by 7 by 365 days so this is the main difference between i can say in simple word in single word if you say means what is service desk guy service desk guy is a proactive proactive member he such that the system system means don't think server or any other thing that means if i connect to my system to my server to router firewall or some other things so combination of all these things i'll call it as a system just like you said digestion system that means it's not only one thing that is a combination of so many things so service desk guy is a proactive member to see such that the system should not go down or system should run should run 24 by 7 by 365 days so your main motto is act proactively whereas help desk so he is always a reactive mode a reactive response that means he will see once the issue is occurred then he will react on that so this is the basic difference between the service desk guy and help desk guy okay clear now what is the difference between the service desk and help desk guy so we have seen that any ticket has came into the service desk so what are the main things that i have to take care first i have to see what is the type of the ticket what is the priority of the ticket what is the sla this total comes under sla what is response time what is resolution time whatever this i have explained is this is for my network domain it may depends upon different different one project may have suppose a development project is there so their p1 ticket may take 4 hours time or 5 hours time so sla is not constant it is varying from client to client project to project so simply what you have to say I mean sla is nothing but what the timelines to resolve the issues this will vary from client to client project to project so that means one project sla will be different other time sla will be different so like that you have to see that what is the sla time what is the type of the priority which project it is and how to behave into this because you are the new guy you are entering as a fresher into the self into the uh, service desk so how you know that how you are to react for this because every organization will have their own way of this so what they will do is they will write one document that is when there is an issue how you are to behave so this is called 
SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. So what is the standard operating procedure for this organization when there is an issue or when you came into the new newly you have introduced in this? I will write daily tasks. Whatever the daily tasks you are getting the task. I will give the procedure how you have to. Go with that task. So I'll write a document. Document. For what purpose I'll write for how I have to. How we have to. Resolve the issue or how we have to go for the issue. How we have to react. On issue. This documents explain us how we are to react for this. So I will give you one example of SOP for service desk. That means when the ticket has came, what are the things you have to do? So I have written a process. So this SOP, I have written a process for process for ticket handling. That means when the ticket has came very fresh, you came into the organization. Even though I explained this, this is the work you will do. But when you are gone into that, how you have to do? So I have written one document. So when the ticket has came, how you are to handle the ticket. So this document, I'll call it as SOP. This is the SOP of the standard operating procedure for this. So what are your roles responsibilities? It will show what is your role when you are into the this. So here I have written one name called RCA. RCA means root cause analysis. If something has gone down, what is the root cause for that? That means why it has gone down. Suppose link has failed. So why the link has failed? The root cause may be some people roadside. There is a digging process. Road winding is going on. Somebody have digged that. So you found that. Or your server has gone down. So why running server has gone down? So is it a hardware issue or is it is a application issue or is there any virus issue that is lacking or is there any malware issue that is making my server to go down? So analyzing that is called root cause analysis of that. So here I explained very clearly. When a ticket has came, the new ticket has landed on the desk. Then what that you had to do? So first understand the details of the ticket. What is that ticket? Suppose you asked you to. Uh, say configure the VPN connection. And he left. So first understand the ticket. OK, he's asking VPN connection from which place to which place it's a VPN I need. So there is no clarity. You give that clarity. But let me know what is the uh, what type of VPN is required from which place to which place you require a VPN connection. So then you had to acknowledge that suppose you got a ticket regarding the SAP side. So you have to understand the ticket and you have to. Give the details that means whether the ticket belongs to the. Uh, what I call it is a finance module, whether I had to send this to the FICO guy 
or whether I had to send it to the MM material management guy or whether I had to send it to the uh, business development guy, which to whom I had to carry this, to whom I had to forward this message that you had to understand. This is what you call it as understanding the details of the ticket. Then you acknowledge the ticket. OK, boss, I received the ticket. This will be forwarded to the concerned person. Then the client will understand that. OK, boss, he has taken that and this has gone to the concerned person. Then concerned person will take care about it. Suppose I have not acknowledged that, then client doesn't know what is happening to me. Suppose you have came to the hotel and you have ordered something to them. Half an hour is over, nothing is coming to you. So he will be in a dilemma whether he is taken my order or not, whether he is cooking or not, or whether I have to stay or I have to go out. So that should not be there. Then he has to say that, boss, it will take 15 minutes time. Please wait. So that is acknowledged. So you will wait for 15 minutes. OK, he has already given that 15 minutes time is there. That means he has taken my order. In a similar way here also, you have to respond and you have to acknowledge that. Then you have to send that which team it has to be sent. And not only sending the ticket is not your work has been done. Because here I said the client will interact with you only. He don't know to whom he has forwarded. He is interacting with you only. But I have forwarded a ticket. What is the status of the ticket? So you have to get in touch with the guy who has you have forwarded. And you have to say, bus, what is the timelines? So here the timeline is two hours they maintain. So how far it has came, whether it is going on or not. Not by the five minutes. You should not ask that guy after sending five minutes. You have to call him after one hour or 45 minutes. Sir, are you looking on this? So the timeline is one hour or timeline is two hours. So accordingly, you have to follow up that guy. So what is the status of the check on the ticket you are watching and tickets to be followed? And get the information that the guy you are getting. Then you had to give that to the other guy that bus it is working or we are working on that or like that you have to do that and you have to resolve the issue within that SLS. Suppose that is not resolving within that SLS. You have to inform to the client. Bus it will take some more time. So here is the one thing that I want to tell you here. So I always said that you have to resolve the issue within uh, SLS. Okay. Within SLS, you have to resolve. Just time goes on explaining this. Are you fine? You want any break? Hello? Are you fine with this? Whatever I'm explaining? Yes sir. Yes. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. You want any break for 15, 20 minutes? You can ask leisurely. There is no issue. You want to relax for some time? Relax for some time and we will take another 15 minutes. We will start our session once again. You need any break? So we'll take break after completing this topic, sir. After completing, there is no break, a total break. <laughs> okay. After that, there is no break, totally relax. If you are happy with that, I'll continue with this. There is no issue for me. Or you want me a break of five, 10 minutes, I'm happy to give you that break so that I too will have some cup of coffee. Sure, sir. Yes. We'll take a break of 10 minutes. Okay, we will take by to, now it is 11. 40. We will be here by 11.45. Fine.
So we will yes, have sir. a break. Break up to 11.45. We'll come back again on that. Okay, just relax for some time. I will go here over this.
All are ready. Shall we go for other part? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Shake. Hope you are understanding what I am explaining. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Now <coughs> we are discussed. So he will ask you what is SOP? So standard operating procedure means what? So standard operating procedure is nothing but what? It is the document which explain the process. Anything it may be process of ticketing system or process of uh, uh, suppose you want to install something. So installation will have different uh, processes. So you have gone newly into that. So there are certain things you have to check certain things you should not check. So for that I prepared a document. So the document I'll call it as what? This document again I'll call it as what? SOP for SOP for in server initial. Which are regular processes. These are all regular processes you will do. So how we are to perform that regular processes in this? So that is what you call it as an SOP of it. So in this I mentioned what is this SOP means here I have given this how the P1 tickets we have to resolve because the new guy who came to the organization he don't know even if he know the process he don't know exactly in this organization how I have to behave. Okay, I think recording is going on or not. Let me check. Okay, recording is going on. <clears throat> okay, no problem. So now, this is the way here I defined this guy. So how we are to go? Here I mentioned for each project, what is the SLA? For each and every project, what is the SLA that he has given? OK, so if somebody have called you on the hotline, suppose manager is there or uh, other head is there, they have called you. They won't raise the ticket. They will call you, but I want uh, this issue. I want this one. You have to resolve this issue. So <coughs> they won't raise that. They will call you. So this call, we call it as hotline calls. So when the call, they call that, on behalf of him, we have to raise the ticket because everything, whatever you have done, it should be with the ticket only. Even if it's a country head or CEO, whoever it may be. So you cannot ask the country head to raise the ticket. So he will call you. So on behalf of him, you will raise the ticket. So this is uh, called by this guy so and so name at this point on this email or something. What is the issue of it? And that you will. Close the ticket. So. You will close the ticket. Until you have a confirmation from the client, you should not close the ticket. Suppose I, I raise the issue. Issue got resolved in 10 minutes. OK, issue got resolved. In 10 minutes. Say it's a P1 issue, half an hour time or 30 minutes time you are given. It is resolved in 10 minutes, but you have informed this to informed. This to client bus issue got resolved. <clears throat> You have to get the acknowledge from the client. Acknowledge from client. Without that, you should not close the ticket. So if you close the ticket, that will become a one more uh, issue. So until you get the acknowledgement, you should not. Drink. 
but the client is not giving an acknowledgement. So what you will do? Your SLA is breaching. You have done your things, but you are not in a position to close the issue. Then what we have to do is we have to hold. Hold the ticket. That means at 25 minutes, I hold the ticket. Five minutes time is there. Even if it is two hours is over, that five minutes time will be left. So until the acknowledgement of the client as you, but I have to mention that holding the ticket as we need confirmation from client. This you must mention, otherwise that will affect your performance. So <clears throat> you should be very careful on handling the ticket because this SLA itself will measure what is your performance. It only gives how best you are doing your service. With this only you will get the your promotions or your uh, increments all will be done with using this SLA results only. Suppose you say. I have a server issue. So this server issue is not because of the uh, operating system. It is a hardware issue. That means hardware issue means suppose VGA card as uh, not working. I have to replace the VGA card. <clears throat> we don't have that VGA card. Then I have to get it from the vendor. So vendor has to get this. So this vendor who get this. It will take you won't get within the SLA is a one hour bus. You have to get it in half an hour means it is not possible for the vendor. So at that time also we have to hold the ticket. At that time also we have to. Hold the ticket. So that your SLA will not be breached. So here we have to mention that. Hardware issue waiting for the vendor to get the hardware. Then your SLA will not go out or time will be stopped there itself. OK, clear. Clear all. So we have seen SOP. Or <coughs> SLA. This is we have done. We have got this SLA. That means we have an agreement. Agreement between. Client. And IT department. To resolve the issue. It means they said, OK, boss, we will do this in this time. So this will be agreed by the both the both the department. That's why they will say. OK, this is totally between the client and IT department. Another is there. We call it as OLA. Organization. <laughs> level organization level agreement. So actually what is this? That means every organization will have some vendors. This is what I want some laptops. Organization don't get the laptops. They will procure the laptops from somebody. He will be the vendor. 
और आई हैव सम सॉफ्टवेयर द सॉफ्टवेयर आई विल प्रोक्योर फ्रॉम समवेयर सपोज आई वांट ऑफिस 365 द वेंडर इज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट गाइस that is not prepared by my organization that is from the microsoft so microsoft will give that similarly you are purchasing the switches routers or even uh, admin side also lights tables chairs these are all there so this organization level agreement means this is the agreement agreement between vendor and it team so all between the uh, what i can say it is no way concerned to the client that means when i purchase the uh, laptop i will ask the vendor suppose there is an issue with my laptop how much time you will repair suppose hard disk is fail will you replace the hard disk immediately or will you or shall i have to wait for that the company has to give the hard disk so like that and if even if it is come to my disk who is going to fix that who is going to transfer the data like that i have an agreement with them even uh your iell links so this is iell stands for <coughs> internet leased lines internet this is very crucial for the organization internet leased line so they will give an agreement for us so my link is live for live around 99% somebody will say 99% somebody will say 99.9% 99.9% my link is up time <clears throat> so how you monitor this the link whatever he said 99 is correct or not so with using again come to the bandwidth so in this if the link has gone down this will become zero so i can understand that how much time the link has gone down so i will verify in a month so how much time it has went out so one one thing i'll say we have an airtel where i was working there in 5 years it is downtime is only 10 minutes the to total india has affected that that is what you call it as uh, ocean the cable has cut so total india has got affected my organization also got affected only 10 minutes for 5 years see how stable this airtel has given suppose reliance so i never believe on reliance at that time not i don't now they have improved a lot <coughs> so this reliance i used to get so many discussion disconnections in one uh, week itself or if you go for vsnl or bsnl is a bharat sanchar nigam this is videsh sanchar nigam so bsnl nobody will believe on this because if you have a down it will take 2 to 3 days to repair so this is the sla they will provide that's why we won't go there only for homes and only for this we will take this bsnl one so this is what the agreement that i am getting from the vendor 
ILL links or any <coughs> products, products uh, like uh, servers or switches, network devices, I'll write. So I will take agreement from these guys. That is, what is your timelines to repair this or to replace this? I cannot keep one firewall back to me. Suppose my firewall itself is gone. The basic firewall, which is handling around 100 to 250 members of the organization, will comes to uh, 8 to 10 lakhs. I cannot keep that 8 to 10 lakhs firewall spare like that. So I will ask the vendor. That is, if the firewall gone down, that is, physically the firewall gone down. So how much time? How much time you take to re replace? This type of agreements, we call it as OLA. This is within my team with the clients. Whatever the uh, timelines I resolved, as timelines uh, to resolve the issue, that we call it as SLA. Understand the difference between the SLA and OLA, all other guys? What is the difference between the SLA and OLA? All are fine. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, last one point in the service desk that I want to deal with you guys is. One more, uh, that is KEDB. This is known error database. So what happens here it is, general errors we will get in the organization. Suppose I say my I have two links. I have two ILL links. OK. This two ILL links. Only one I am using. Other is backup. OK, so if one fails, I have to divert that data to other router. This is error we got is link is down. So when the link is down, what the things you have to do? That I have documented at one place. That means go to the enter into the router and type these commands IP route source and destination like that I'll write the commands. I'll say to the guys who are coming new to this when in your work if there is any link values check that link failure then I'll say I'll write like this log into router with admin password, admin or any other passwords, whatever that you are given, admin and password, and go to this hash prompt. That means you are in the admin mode. Then you write this like this IP route. You type this command source that means your organization link and where is the destination that is the link outside that is the ip addresses we have to write 
before that how to escalate so my vsnl we won't take two same links one is a airtel another is a vsnl my airtel has gone down then i will take this first i will make my link up <clears throat> then i will give one more thing so that escalate escalate the issue to vsnl or vendor any vendor how i to escalate so this is the mail id for this mail id give the report that is it is down so when the report is down i think he might have explained in the <clears throat> your network uh, uh, network uh, portion he might have explained that how when i can say my system is down when my network is down so that down that report you have to take that is continuous ping report you have to take continuous ping report you have to take and you have to give it to the concerned vendor mail id so this is what i have written at one place when there is an error if this is an error you have to be like this so this is called known error databases general occurring errors will be documented at one place so if there is an issue we will go through that error and we will rectify the issue so this is called the known error database i'll write once again what is kedb or known error database is nothing but this is the database of don't think that database means again you are using sql or uh, uh, oracle or this so no such thing it is a document it is a document i'll write instead of it is a document defines the errors that are occurring in regular day to day works and how to resolve is all this is a document i have written how to resolve the errors so this errors the document which is defining the errors that generally occurring in our day to day lives and how to resolve that to make you guys to uh, understand and resolve the issues so that document we call it as kedb sop means what it is the process that means regular process it's not errors it is the regular processes we will use in our organization that process we will document that document we call it as sop clear difference between the sop and kedb all are clear yes sir okay <clears throat> now this is one more suppose i said you have to resolve in within the 
what you call it as uh, within the timelines. Suppose you are not, you are, you got the ticket. You have not resolved within timelines. Either you may be overlooked or something has happened. So that ticket will automatically go to the team lead. It will not be in your bucket. That means in your login. So stating that SIE has uh, not resolved the issues, it has oh, overdue of SLA. Then the team lead has to resolve the issue. If the team lead is not, team lead is also overlooked, then it will go to either the manager or head of the department. Then this will be the big uh, uh, task for you two guys. So you have to face these guys. So why there is a drawback in resolving the issue? What made you to um, breach that? You have to give an explanation for that. So don't uh, make that you have to go to that explanation. So you should always be there in the SLA. If that you are not in that position to give that, then you can transfer the ticket to some other guy also. Stating that I am working on so, so and so issue, so it will take more time. So to resolve that, uh, it is taking more time for me. So I'll transfer the ticket to some other guy. On his other IT guys, accept only you have to transfer the ticket. But here is the problem is you are transferring the ticket indicates that you are not capable of doing the work. So you should take at most care in resolving the issue and this type of issues will be overlooked also. Suppose your uh, number of tickets is more you can escalate, you can say that I'm transferring this ticket to some other guy. So that guy will take care about that. So like this, <coughs> we are using all these things here. Okay, so this is the theory, but I have a one demo for this, uh, how the ticket has came and how that, this is the real, 70s demo actually mm, we have used this so uh, in this i'll share that to you guys you go through that mm, you will see that i think to someone i have shared it mm, this is in latifs only somewhere i shared to them let me check to whom i shared this Very first, I think I shared that service this. Oh, oh, where is that here? I'm not having the order to get me. Okay, I'll check with the Latif only. I shared with the Latif. Where, where are you, Bas? Sir, it's in the top, sir. Yeah, this not that I think. This is this is the group. In the group is not there. I shared some. That is uh, Sai Prasad, the demo is there. Help desk demo like that. He has shared me. Somewhere. So I'll, I'll check like that. Instead of this, I'll go to 
YouTube. Latif is there. Latif of the Latif, I think Latif Shake. Where are you, man? YouTube. YouTube, I think. So here you will find somewhere Sai Prasad uh, demo for this guy. It's not this guy, Latif Sheikh. Where you are, man? Anyone, you type that Latif on YouTube. Latif, Latif, where are you, man? Seventy. Sir, I seen the link in chat box. Sir, chat box. Sir, you can open that. Yeah. Latif, sir, YouTube channel in meeting chat box. Sir, in this meeting chat box, that's what I am checking. Where is that Latif? No, sir, in uh, Google Teams meeting chat box. Google? No, in Teams, sir. You can in Teams. In, in Teams, teams only, in this sir. meeting. In this meeting only, I am checking. Yes, sir. Latif is there, na? Latif not test. Latif shake. I sir, think. Uh, see. In this. So you can some... see in the top. Let's see a Latif test one. Please click that. Here, here. Yeah, that is not a service desk demo by Sai Processor or this. <clears throat> OK. Uh, real time, actually, I want to give that real time. Service desk guy is not here today. So just I'll pass on this. You check here. So here I explained very clearly from the beginning from the beginning itself how to sir naresh one so here i i i explain how to this is the login, how you will go for the login of that and how the tickets will come. These are all I explained in this by the technical guy there. So that is this. So I'll share that link to you. Not by Naresh. Yeah, this I think. Go through this, you will have this. Yeah, here I explain this, how the real service desk, how the service desk will be there. This is 70 service desk actually. So, so this link I will share with you guys. So how he is logging on into this? Can you able to hear anything on this? So here how he is logging on with using your username password. 
Here, so he explained everything on this. So here, this is the real two minutes. This is the uh, real service desk that what we are using in this seven days. So go through this. If there is any doubts, you can ask me and you can show. Now, I think this I have shown to the guys who are at that time. Now there is no just chance to show you live on that. So same thing I have made it here and I'll send it to you guys. So please go through that and check that how the service desk is coming and how we are using this. So this I am copying and I'm giving it to you guys. So my number is not there with your team. So yes, I'll, ask the, uh, I'll ask the Latif to share this so that he will share your things here. <clears throat> I think in this itself you have, I'm sharing in this, just you go through this. Uh, Latif test only now. Just you check whether you can see this or not. Anybody can check. In this Sorry, test only. Yeah. Got it? Okay. So go through that exactly how the ticket is coming. Whatever the theory I have shown in this, all will be there in the practically how the ticket is coming, how we are resolving, how you are changing the priority also I have given, how I am keeping the hold of the ticket, what is mean by open ticket, what is mean by closed ticket, all I have explained clearly. The same environment you will find when you go into the HCL. Okay, so maybe look and feel is different. The terminology is same. So go through this. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask me so that I'll clarify your doubts. Okay, guys. How do we contact you, sir? True, <laughs> chat only. Uh, just you say to Latif that you want to speak to me, I'll come into that. Okay. okay. On that day, just I'll check out my things and I'll come out on the next day or that day. I'll come. Okay. So any more things you want me to talk to me? Thank you all the guys. Uh,